Hello everybody, hope you're doing well, hope your weekends went well guys. Welcome back to a CSGO weekend recap, what happened the past few days, I'm going to tell you guys in today's episode. Hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, kind of in breaking news, all around Richard Lewis who posted this to Twitter just last night. If you guys were curious what that was about, he's officially stepping down, taking a leave of absence from the E-League network, also known as Turner TV. So kind of a big news and kind of a big shock here as well, because of course last week we lost Sadokiss for a short amount of time. We might be losing Richard Lewis for a longer amount of time. We do not know his future inside the esports industry. As as you guys can see in his post, he's taking a leave of absence to pursue other options or other availabilities inside the esports scene. So again, no one knows what his near future may hold, whether it's going to be CSGO or some other some other esport out there. I do have to say, guys, I'm fairly certain he's not going to be leaving CSGO anytime soon. But again, other people out there, of course, we have Anders and Semler taking big breaks from CSGO to pursue other esports. In the past year or so, you can say we've now named big four, uh, four big members, Anders and Semler being the first of which to take a break from CSGO, now Richard Lewis, and of course, I guess you could say Sado Kiss was not his own option to leave, but a lot of commentators out there leaving the CSGO scene, it could be a great time for rising casters out there and commentators to take over the scene and make their mark as well. Again, we can expect a video probably sometime in the next week or so from Richard Lewis himself. I'll link his channel down below for all of you guys who are curious about his updates, about what his pursuits will be in esports in the future. He is now taking a leave of absence, a step down from E-League for the first time in over two years of association with them. Now, even more importantly, people are curious, will E-League be shutting down their CSGO operations? I can tell you guys that's very, very unlikely. We've seen production-wise and quality-wise two of the best majors so far from E-League. Alongside that, guys, E-League Premier, also E-League Season 1 and 2. This guy's, this is a company that's doing very well in the CSGO scene. I highly doubt they will be leaving. Although Richard Lewis, we're uncertain right now for his future inside CSGO. He will be taking a short leave of absence, guys, to pursue other opportunities. We're going to find out sometime soon what those opportunities might just be. And also, huge shouts to my sponsor for today's episode. If you guys do want to gamble some cryptocurrency out there and you are of age, I actually am sponsored by Ethereum Crash or ethcrash.io. I'll link them down below, guys. The best margins and best profitability for all of you guys who want to, I guess you can't gamble CSGO skins for the time being, so if you want to gamble cryptocurrency and are of the legal age, thanks to that sponsor, guys. This is my last video for them. Bouncing off that, guys, into bigger stories as well. A little bit of a weekend recap special here. We go back and, of course, see some videos out there that were posted. The first of which I do want to talk about was actually Mojo and Giuliano. They got very intimate in their Q&A video, so if you guys want to know any very personal details or facts about them, I'll link that video down below as well. So that was kind of a, a weird thing to see on top of that as well. And bigger news, guys, we also had, of course, War Owl take his note on gambling. Is this the end of CSGO gambling? We've seen many YouTubers out there trying to post videos about this. Uh, Anomaly being one of them as well, posting several videos about the future of CSGO. Will it be PUBG skins? Will it be CSGO skins? I'll have updates for you guys later this week on many websites out there. Some of my future sponsors as well, which are going and converting their entire websites from CSGO skins to PUBG skins. But also, this next week's a big week to see if Valve does respond to the case. Will they revert their seven-day trade ban? Most likely not. Will they change it to a, to a three-day trade ban, to a one-day trade ban? No one knows right now because Valve is, is so poorly communicating with the community. Hopefully updates sometime soon from them on the whole trade ban idea. Now on top of that as well, we also had Taco officially join Team Liquid in place of his Brazilian brother, Steel. That was finally confirmed, guys. He took to Twitter right away as well to take some quick little jabs, some little some little digs here. I'm sure he did not mean anything by it, guys. Calling Elise the best, uh, the best player in the world, also calling Nitro the best IGL in the world. Little subtle digs there at his old teammates, of course, Cold Zero and Fallen, most notably known as one of the better uh, players in the world, one of the better oppers or IGLs in the world as well. He actually made note, though, his new teammates are certainly the best players. They're certainly the best IGL uh, in the game as well. So it's going to be cool to see that little rivalry there between SK Gaming now and Team Liquid with Taco officially joining their roster, guys. We're going to see if that rivalry is going to be an actual thing, and I cannot wait to watch those first matches. In very last of today's short episode of CSGO News, I'm going to wait a couple days to our next episode, guys. I have other videos to work on, so hopefully by the next time you see me for a CSGO News episode, going to be a lot more news in that video, but also I do want to talk about, of course, in the thumbnail, the struggles of Virtus Pro. They do continue with Mishu on that roster, Taz, of course, away as well. Uh, that roster is still continuing to see a roller coaster of events. This past weekend, guy was actually a tournament known as BetsNet, and they've actually faced losses from several teams there. One of them being a surprising rising team right now on screen for all of you is actually Team Fragsters, an average age of 19 on that squad. Everyone on that squad is actually under 22 years old, and actually one of them is only 16 years old. They're a rising Danish squad right there. They actually took down Virtus Pro not once, but actually twice in a best of three. So best of three wins twice. Uh, Fragsters actually beat Virtus Pro in this single tournament. Virtus Pro will not be placing top four at BetsNet. A uh, kind of a cool tournament going on right now. Actually live today at the point of you guys watching this. But the struggles continue even more from there, guys. Of course, we had Mountain Dew League, the LAN event qualifier going on. Of course, your top teams from Mountain Dew League are going to compete for that last EPL spot. And P Virtus Pro, again, will not be there, guys. They will continue to be in Mountain Dew League again next season if they do choose to compete there because they have once again failed 
failed to qualify even for the LAN event to actually get that EPL spot. So they're going to be fighting for one EPL spot. Virtus Pro failed to even make the LAN event to try and qualify for that spot. So unfortunately enough, guys, where they lost it was actually another best of three against another, I guess you could say, a lower tier CIS team, a team that definitely should not be beating Virtus Pro, especially any time in the past. It was actually Team Spirit who took down Virtus Pro in a best of three to qualify for the last Mountain Dew League LAN event spot and actually have a chance to fight for their last Pro League spot as well. So again, guys, a, a rough weekend here for Virtus Pro, losing twice to Team Fragsters, a super young Danish squad, and again, losing to Team Spirit in a best of three. All of their big losses to best of threes as well, where you think a, a better team would definitely come out on top. Virtus Pro struggles continue here, guys. Pasha tweeting out things like this. The doubt continues. I don't know how many countless tweets we've seen Pasha have. I just don't see his motivation. Anyway, the, the most disappointing part is his numbers were actually doing very well. He performed very well at both these tournaments, both these events, and unfortunately enough, guys, just not enough for Virtus Pro. The struggles have continued. What the future for them is, I really can't tell you. But again, really quickly to note, this Fragster squad, like I said before, their youngest player is 16. Every player on the team is less than, uh, younger than 22 years old. They beat some really good teams these past week or so. A close matchup with North, they did lose, but they beat Gambit. They beat Godsent. They beat Virtus Pro twice. They beat some very, very good lineups there. So a rising squad in the Danish scene right now and just breaking your top 50 teams on HLTV. Look out for them though. But what's the future of Virtus Pro has been the real question. Now, very lastly, I do want to say, of course, there's rumors out there about Cloud9's newest fit member. They do still need an opera. Will Skadoodle come back? Will he stay on the bench? Of course, Skadoodle can go wherever he wants right now. The latest rumors out there, of course, we saw uh, maybe Yugi from Heroic. He's been inactive lately. The first one was JDM. That apparently fell through. The latest rumor out there is actually NRG Cirque. He's also 16 years old, doing very well. I mean, immensely well for NRG. One of the best upcoming operas right now. People kind of on the fence right now. Should he actually leave NRG? NRG doing amazingly well in Pro League. They've been on a crazy win streak or been on several crazy win streaks throughout the season so far. They're likely probably your number, at least a top three North American team right now. And Cirque is probably your best North American opera. He's your latest rumor to actually join Cloud9. Will he do that? is the real question. He's had a history of, of leaving teams for, of course, being demanded on high request, and this is actually nothing new for him. So we'll see who joins, guys. Cloud9's newest opera could be just 16 years old. We'll find out sometime soon. As always, I hope you guys all on today's episode of CSK News. My name is Jake Morales. You, thank you guys who all watched the live streams this week. It was an amazing weekend, and uh, that's why my voice is kind of raspy today. So hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, guys.